We are at the very heart of the beautiful Stuttgart University campus, at the so-called Institute for Computational Physics. After long years of cumbersome searching, we have learned that this here is one of the very few places where we might be able to observe theoretical physicists in their natural habitat. Somewhere within these corridors lurks the maybe most reclusive species to never be captured on film. According to local Aboriginal people, one of the best places to encounter these creatures is right here, in the oddly named kitchen area. Our cameraman positions his equipment. While this might seem like a very exposed spot to the layman, behavioral studies have shown that the theoretical physicist rarely looks at living things like plants and will avoid direct sunlight at all costs. So we set up camp right next to a palm tree and in front of a brightly lit window to avoid being spotted too soon. The first to arrive at the scene are the secretaries. They live in symbiotic alliance with the theoretical physicists. Able to communicate with both species, they serve as a sole and vital link between the theoretical physicist and the outside world, while the herd allows them to, you know, tag along. It is now just past 11 a.m. and the herd is still fast asleep. The kitchen area is empty and we use the time to examine the surroundings. Among sturdy dishes and empty bottles, we find a contraption that closely resembles a normal foosball table, but we are not aware of its meaning at this point. Merely a few hours later, we can smell that the first specimen have arrived at the scene. But even here, on their home territory, they are very elusive and frustratingly hard to capture on film. But then we are offered some great advice from the secretaries. We set up a so-called coffee machine, which apparently lures in physicists in an irresistible way. Just shortly after, we can observe a large flock of these creatures gathering around our bait. One of them is even close to making eye contact with another, until they spot us and gallop away. Later that same year, we even managed to track down a female specimen, who by some people had been believed to be extinct. But all male physicists will keep a few kilometers distance from their female counterparts, and it is still unclear how, or even if, physicists are able to reproduce. Our patience has paid off, and by now the herd has accepted us as furniture and does not consider us a threat anymore. At this point, we are allowed to be witness to a breathtaking spectacle. Not being able to converse in normal ways, the theoretical physicists seem to use the foosball table to decide arguments and maybe even determine their rank within the herd. Never before has such an extrovert behavior been seen amongst these species. To top off our visit, we are graced with the sight of one of nature's best kept secrets. From its size alone, we can instantly tell that the specimen we see here is a junior professor, the beta male of the herd. Having safely observed our bait for years, he has now come out of hiding to get a coffee. The encounter is brief, but will stick with us for the rest of our lives. In the decades we spent here, we have seen almost a dozen different theoretical physicists and have finally learned a few things about their nature. The mental issues we will be struggling with in the future are a small price to pay for the progress we made in studying this rare and solitary species.